Welcome inside another edition of Dixie State Women's Basketball Weekly. As always, joined by head coach J.D. Gustin right here inside the CEC TV studios. A lot to talk about this week on the uh, heels of a four-game road trip in the Bay Area. Also, home game coming up a little bit later tonight on Friday against President Pacific. And then uh, we'll talk just a little bit about the trip into Hawaii next week. Coach, thanks for stopping by. Like I said, a lot to talk about. You go to the Bay Area and yeah. you split two, two wins two losses, you're in an overtime game, it felt like maybe could have won that game as well, but all in all, uh, at least from my perspective, felt like did some good things on the trip and uh, capped it with a thrilling overtime, or not an overtime win, but a thrilling come from behind victory over uh, Academy of Art. Just your thoughts in general about the trip and we can maybe look at uh, some of those games a little bit more in specific. Well, I think you're, um, we're definitely um, excited to be, uh, you know, two and two coming out of it, but, but uh, at the same time, we're um, still a little bit disappointed about that first game, of yeah. course, you know. But but uh, yeah, we we um, found a way to recover from that game and, and get a good win at, at Holy Names, where we played really well the first half. Uh, I was really impressed with just uh, we came out and uh, kind of hitting on all cylinders. Yeah. Um, and it was, we got a, a got a good lead, and, and it was it was it was good for our team to play with a lead for once. It doesn't happen very often, you know. And then and then ran into a buzz saw against Dominican, which we kind of um, thought might happen, and. Um, I felt like we were stuck to the four for most of the game, but um, rallied to a certain extent. Yeah. And then, and then the the arts game was huge for us to come down and and, and you know the fourth game in ten days, all that sort of thing, um, and r had a really poor first half in terms of energy, enthusiasm, and, and just overall effort to respond with different players making different yeah. plays. Um, we we um, we did a, a couple things that we've never done offensively, a couple things we've never done defensively with new lineups and found a way to win. And so um, it's a really um, big game for us and, and then ultimately a, a good trip. It was a lot of fun. With such a young team, you know, taking a, a team on a trip like they got a lot of freshmen on this team that have probably never been on a trip like that before. You know, maybe it's two games a week. Yeah. You know, maybe it's a cross town trip to play, you know, in high school, but now you're taking them on the road for 10 days. How do you, as a coach, mentally prepare a team for that trip? And when you're in the midst of it, what kind of things do you try to do to keep them fresh and say, hey, you know, we're only two games in, we got another week on the road, and we got to stay fresh physically and mentally. Yeah, a lot of it is, uh, there's no question that experience um, has a lot to do with, with these kind of trips, being able to be on them before and, and know what you're expecting. But we just talk about it. We talk about it. Um, we have our, our older kids talk about it with their younger kids. And then ultimately, we, um, we ask them not to use an excuse. There's no excuses. You're a college basketball player. You're a grown woman. You're, a, you're an adult. And this is the way that we do it, and, and you have to um, you have to hop on. And, and so we um, we just we just talk about it and, and look it straight in the eye and, and, and move forward from there. Let's talk about the, the the wins on the trip. It seems like almost a theme to this season. You could almost say you know nothing's been easy for this team oh, this year. Every sure. win has been a battle, you know, down to the end. And you know, like you mentioned, the Holy Names game. You had a great first half, and mm -hmm. looking like okay, maybe this is the game where we you know, push it open in the second half, and then Holy Names battles back and cuts mm -hmm. it down to two. Uh, the Academy of Art game, like you said, you had that great second half, able to build a, a lead in the second half and, and win that game. But nothing's come easy, and these two wins are really for this team the whole season, and they're just overcoming adversity and, and growing together. Have you seen growth from day one to now? I don't think there's any question about that, but I, I, would, I would say that probably every team in the country has, you know, for the most part. But I like... Uh, um, you know, a lot of about what we do in, in college basketball, it's about overcoming adversity. It's about how you do it. And our kids are figuring out how we do it here at Dixie State. Um, and that just, that takes time. Um, it takes reps. It takes other uh, um, people that have been, you know, other players that have been through it, what we've yeah. done. It, help, it takes them helping. And, and, and there's no question it's a process. But, you know, with eight games left, um, we're happy with where we're, we're at. We, we finally getting all of our pieces back. I felt like on pra in practice on, uh, on Tuesday, I felt like we had an army. You know, we, you know, we had 13 <laughs> yeah. kids, and <laughs> it was really um, comforting and a little bit uplifting to, to have a, our whole team back. And that leads perfectly into you know, talking about uh, Fresno Pacific, obviously, uh, tonight here on Friday night inside the Burns Arena. Finally get to play a, a game yeah. inside the comfy confines of home before uh, then heading back out on the road again for a few more days to Hawaii and Chaminade and Hawaii Pacific, but uh, Fresno Pacific, you know, a lot better than, than they've been in, in recent years and a team that is not to be taken lightly tonight when you take them on. 
Yeah, and we don't, we're not taking anyone lightly yeah. in our league. We look at them all the same at this point. Um, every one of them can beat us, and we feel like we can beat every one of them. Um, Fresno Pacific um, has a new coach, and, and he, he has them feeling uh, very confident. They, they play really free, really easy, really loose. Um, don't care about mistakes that they made. They play really fast. It's, 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 a, it's one pass and a shot or one pass and a screen and a shot. They want to score it. Um, and so it's, it'll be a nice challenge for us, um, especially because we're not very good defensively. That's, that's our, there's no question that's our emphasis. Now, we're trying to get better every day, staying in front of our person and being better um, defensively because we're bad right now at it. And so this is a great first test. They, they want to score. They want to get up and down. And our challenge is to, um, is to slow them down. Our, our goal is to keep them under 65 tonight. And uh, they average, you know, 75 or whatever it is. So, um, you know, I, um, but there's no question. It's it's the next step in our um, our process. The next step in our goal to 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 make that conference tournament. And um, we can't we can't lose in, anymore and, and still you know expect to make that thing. So every game's a big game for us at this point. Fresno Pacific Friday night tonight inside the Burns Arena. And then don't want to look too far ahead, but again, trip to Hawaii mm -hmm. looming. That's you know you'll be taken off and ready for that trip before we even sit down and have this show <laughs> again. So yeah. how do you keep, you know, the girls and your team and I'm sure even a lot of the, you know, guys on the, on the men's team are kind of looking for it. Hey, you get to go to Hawaii mm -hmm. again. How do you keep them focused on the game tonight and say, hey, let's win this game and then we can think about Hawaii? Well, it's, it's real simple for us because if you don't um, think about tonight, you know, your goal is finished in our, uh, and then what are you playing for at that point? Yeah. You know, and, and when that happens, if hopefully that doesn't happen, but if, if that happens, things change completely for our team. You know, we, 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 we have to we reassess a bunch of things and, and, and our goals, our, our, our thoughts, the way that we, we um, process every day and, and attack every day changes. And I don't think our players want that right now. You know, I mean, just, they don't. Yeah. And so um, I don't think it's a problem whatsoever looking, for, you know, ahead to, to Hawaii. Now, having said that, the Hawaii trip's hard. People don't understand. Like, that was my first experience last year. And Business it, trip. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it's so hard because yeah. it's not. Like, you're in Hawaii. You're in yeah. a little bit of paradise. So, um, you know, I think it's extremely difficult for a young, inexperienced group to go to Hawaii and, and, and play well and have success. And that's what we're going to ask our kids to do. Significant easier, easier, significantly easier, excuse me, for, like, our men's team who are veteran and experienced and have the best player in the conference and, all, and, and a tremendous coach and all that sort of thing. Um, you know, one game at a time. Yeah. We're going we're to do our best with, with Chaminade and, and do our best to prepare for that um, and then go from there. Yeah, uh, it's been fun and uh, it'll be a fun, fun race to the, yeah. to the end here. And, you know, fingers crossed and just hoping for the best. And yeah, would love to see, you know, be able to accomplish that goal of making the, the conference tournament. Of course, it all starts tonight against Fresno That's Pacific. Right. So, uh, That's right. Good luck tonight, and uh, good you, luck Carrick. moving forward in, in Hawaii next appreciate, week. Appreciate. I got to say hi to my uh, mom, dad, Carrick. Yeah. Um, they're my biggest fans, of course, and um, my mom's actually coming to um, to St. George to watch my kids, so my wife can go with us to Hawaii. So good. I have to tell her thanks, and um, that's the yeah, way it should so be. That's the way it should be, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, appreciate everything you do for us. Absolutely, we'll keep a close eye on those games. We're going to take a quick, just short, thirty-second timeout. When we come back, we'll be joined by sophomore guard Allie Franks. Talk about what uh, helped her make her decision to come to Dixie and her time in a Trailblazer uniform so far. So stick with us. More uh, Dixie State Women's Basketball Weekly coming up right after this quick break. Welcome back inside this week's edition of Dixie State Women's Basketball Weekly. Joined this week by sophomore guard Allie Franks. Allie, thanks for taking some time out of your busy schedule to be here. This is kind of a, a take two. We tried to do this in the Bay Area. Fortunately, the, the video, the technology just didn't work out. So here we are again. We want to make sure that we had uh, a good, clear picture and, and an opportunity for you to be featured on the show. So thanks for stopping by and taking some time out of your schedule. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Back after a long road trip in, in the Bay Area, speaking of California, those four games, and you know, split those two games there, and finally back in the Burns, getting ready to play Fresno Pacific a little bit later today, actually, mm -hmm. here on, on Friday, and uh, just looking forward to that game. But I always look forward to the opportunity to get to know the student athletes a little bit better, and that's what 
this show and these segments have, have been all about. So let's just jump right into it. First question I like to ask, obviously, is um, you're here at Dixie State, you're wearing a Trailblazer uniform. You know, what was it that led you to help make that decision? What was it about the school or the, the area, the facilities? Obviously, a lot of things play into recruitment. Mm -hmm. What was it that helped you decide to, you know, sign your, and dot your name on that paper and say, yeah, I'm going to Dixie State? Yeah, so from the start, like me and my twin, we wanted to go to the same school, experience everything together. And with that, like it limits you a lot because a lot of people don't want to take two people at the same position with like pretty much the same skill. But so we committed to another school and then a month before school started, Dixie randomly contacted us and like I was hesitant because like I gave my commitment to another school, but you have to step back and think this is my college experience, like what's best for us. And with the coaches and the amazing facilities here, like you can't beat it. So it's pretty much an easy decision at that point. You mentioned your twin, yes. Kylie, and uh, you both played together last year on the mm -hmm. team. And now she's, uh, she's not here serving LDS mission at, at this time. Yeah. First time in your life we were talking about before we started this that really you don't have, you know, what you can call your other half with you. What, yeah. What's it like, you know, not having her around and not having her on the basketball court? I'm sure you've grown up on the court together. I'm mm -hmm. sure that's different this year. Yeah, so we played other sports separately, but for basketball, I've never been on a team <clears throat> without her. So it's like the main thing that like is missing is like just an extra support system with you because she was always there, you know, encouraging. We always had each other's back. But with my teammates, like we're all sisters right now. So like you don't really miss that in a sense because like you have more people. But I mean, there's things I experience where I'm like, oh, you know, like I have to email her about them instead of like experience them with her. But it's been a hard transition in the beginning, but it's definitely getting easier. Speaking of that team this year, obviously every team's different. You know, there are mm -hmm. a few girls from last year's team on this year's squad, but each and every team is different and, and unique and that's how it's supposed to be. But yeah. what makes this year's team unique? What makes this team special versus other teams maybe you've been a part of? Um, I can like honestly say every single person on the team wants to compete. Everyone will you know, put on the uniform and they know how grateful and lucky they are to play. And I think that's special because you don't get that everywhere. People take a lot of things for granted. And just playing with people that equally want to win and care and love the game, it's definitely something special. This question is not going to be a very, very deep question, but what, obviously you're a basketball player, you play other sports as well, but what is it about basketball that keeps you coming back? Obviously you played it your whole life, yeah. you're a couple years into your college career, and obviously there's something there that keeps pulling you back. I like to ask that question as well. You know, what is it to you about yeah. the game of basketball that you love so much? Uh, I think it's just like it's constantly like competitive. You're constantly doing something. In other sports, like you just sit around, you wait for like your turn. But like basketball, it's go, go, go. And you always have like other teammates to rely on. Like you can get assists, you can get rebounds, you can score. Like there's always something you can like put into the game. It's just basketball. <laughs> it's just something about it. You're the only sophomore on this year's team. A lot of freshmen behind you, though, yeah. and even some of the upperclassmen ahead of you weren't on the team last mm -hmm. year. So in a way, you're a veteran on this team because you've been through, you know, with Coach Gustin, you've been through the, mm -hmm. a, a year and, and know what to expect. Have you taken kind of a leadership role on it all to kind of help some of those freshmen along and say, hey, this is how that first year is going to go. I can help you out here on the school, on the campus, whatever it may mm -hmm. be. Yeah, I tried, and I think I did. Like, my freshman and I, like instantly got a bond because like we're both like we're all underclassmen and so like they come to me for questions I'm there to help and I think the main thing like as a veteran you can like show them is buying into the system because you have to do that to like succeed so I think that was the main thing like I wanted to show them is like you have to buy into coach's system in order for us to win. Think back on your time season and a half here at, at Dixie State is there a particular moment that kind of jumps out at you, you know, maybe a three-point shot and a key moment in a game here at Dixie State, or is there a game that you can look back on and say, man, that was a fun game to be a part of, basically your favorite moment here at Dixie State? Um, let's see. I'd probably say the Westminster game, mm -hmm. like all in all, because we're going to be playing against them like three times from now on with the preseason game. And it was good to beat them because now like going into conference, yeah. now we can have like an in-state rival. Because if we just, if we would have lost it, they would have think, oh, Dixie, you know, it's not going to be hard. But, like, we came out, we competed, I think, one of the best games we've ever, like, competed against a team. And we won, so. That was 
That was a fun game. Yeah. That's a good one to pick, a thrilling game. It always helps to, to win those games as well. Anyway, thanks again for taking a couple minutes. We've run out of time here on the show, but uh, it's just great to get to know you and, and the other student athletes and just having fun, keeping a close eye on, on the women's basketball team and your season so far. So good luck tonight and going forward the rem remainder of the season. Thank you. Another big shout out to uh, Coach Gustin and thank Allie as well for joining us on the show today. Remember, uh, the women's basketball team taking on Fresno Pacific inside the Burns Arena tonight. That's Friday night, uh, 5.30 p.m. tip. Uh, and then heading to Hawaii, take on Chaminade and Hawaii Pacific next week before returning back to the Burns Arena again for another uh, four-game homestand. Check that, a three-game homestand. The four-game homestand was a little earlier in the season. Thanks for tuning in. This has been this week's edition of Dixie State Women's Basketball Weekly. We'll catch you next week on the show.